Okay, so hopefully you can see that on screen. Um, confidence and clarity using Zoom. So this is a session uh, that myself and my colleague Jackie Maloney, who's an actress, prepared um, a while ago and we've adapted it for Business Station today. Um, so very excited to be doing that. Um, a little meme there to hopefully give you a little smile. Finally understood what Zoom meetings remind me of. And you can see the Muppet Show from years ago. And it, it, it's a very strange new world that we're in and we've had to all adapt very quickly. Um, I myself have been in education for a long time and using online tools for a long time, but Zoom this year has exploded. And so it seems to be the tool of choice, the software of choice that a lot of people are going with. Um, and it does have a lot of great functionality. So we're just going to look at a few of those things today and how you can plan and prepare and deliver your best Zoom session. Whether you are client facing or doing internal meetings, you'll have lots of things you can take away from today. Um, I just quickly want to do an acknowledgement of country. Uh, I'm from Wales myself. My name is Welsh um, and, uh, you know, it's a land of dragons and princes, but I've made Western Australia my home, so I'd like to acknowledge the Wajuk people of the Noongar Nation as the traditional owners and custodians of the land that I am on today, and there will be other elders to acknowledge where, where you are living, where you are today, um, and I'd like to pay my respects to Noongar elders past, present and emerging, um, and I think it's important that we do that, even though we are online, we are still living and uh, working in beautiful places. Okay, a little bit about me before we get into it, so you know I know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm a lecturer, a trainer, a coach. Um, I currently work with Curtin University. Um, I was previously with UWA on their diploma program and foundation program. I also do corporate training and have public workshops as well. So I've been in education for 15 years, qualified teacher and uh, lecturer. Uh, I do personal, professional and academic development, so depending on the topic. Normally I talk about critical thinking, decision making, problem solving and effective communication. Um, but because of those things and because of our lockdown, I've also become a regular user of Zoom. And it's amazing how it opens things up. Um, just last week I got an inquiry from the United Arab Emirates, which a year ago I probably would have said, I don't think I can do that unless you want to fly me out there. But these days you say, actually, that is possible. And so it opens up a world of opportunities for us. Um, and it's a really great tool to get proficient in as best you can. Um, so next week for Business Station, I'll be delivering a session on online course creation. And that's something that you might want to hop along to as well. If using Zoom for education purposes is something that you want to do. Um, so the objectives for today, we're going to improve your Zoom in a fun, practical session. We're going to look at screen setup and presence. We're going to look at planning your session. We're going to look at easy ways to make the session interactive and engaging so we can get overwhelmed with trying to make it complicated, but there's some really simple tools and tricks you can use. Um, and some ideas for housekeeping and etiquette that you might want to incorporate in your own sessions. So housekeeping for today is a bit strange because it's a webinar, but normally when we're on a Zoom meeting, we've got everyone on screen and some good general rules and feel free to you know, copy these for yourself is to have some of these things that you set up at the beginning so people know what the expectation is. Um, and it depends how formal the meeting is, whether it's being recorded, things like that, as to how strict you want to be with this. But things like um, muting your audio if you're not talking, it's really important, particularly if there's a chance of interruptions, people coming in. Using the reactions button is really nice. So you have a thumbs up and a little clap hands in the bottom corner. Um, so that's a nice way to give someone some quick feedback, particularly if the person presenting might say, you know, can you see the stuff that I'm doing all right? Or you want to acknowledge what they're talking about applaud it, whatever, without interrupting the flow of what they're doing. So do use those, don't be shy. They're really actually very helpful to the person running the meeting to see how things are going. Um, if you have a question, you can write it with a capital Q in the chat box um, or feel free to, if you're in a, a meeting where people can see you, you can raise your hand if it's immediately applicable. Um, and because of the nature of it, that Muppet Show kind of lots of faces in a box, 
a movement like waving your hand can attract people's attention quite quickly. So if it's something urgent, but if it's not urgent, then it's worth writing it in the chat box so people can come back and review that. Um, if you need to leave, you might want to ask people to write excuse me in the chat box because, you know, imagine if you were sitting in a meeting in town or something and uh, you're in a room and someone just gets up and walks out, you'd be sat there going, oh, what happened? Um, whereas normally we might say, oh, excuse me, I I've just got to nip out or I've just got to take this call, something like that. That's quite a nice little touch to acknowledge the people around you and that they you know that they're there um make this the main focus during the session so um you know today i hope that if you're watching this live with us um that you are focused on this you're making notes you are you know putting your phone away whatever you need to do um and likewise what we're going to talk about today is having quality time on zoom rather than quantity on zoom so i would always encourage you to say that to the people that are in a session if you're organizing um, we are recording today so if you want to remain completely anonymous um, you can change your name in the q a box some of you your names i i, I can't tell who's there um, but your your name will pop up so i might say oh paula has asked this so something for you to think about you can change it in the settings and that's you know it's worth having a good play around with zoom maybe with a friend and just getting used to all the different functionalities and you know if it's a friend rather than a professional person you can sit and go what happens when i do this and what happens when i do this because the way that we learn best with something like zoom or any kind of software is to do to actually practice so we'll touch on that as we go through today um, okay, so this is my lovely friend Jackie here, <laughs> and she is a screen actress. So when we were preparing this session, we were approaching it, applying her knowledge and experience of how to come across well on screen in the actual session. So as you can see here, Jackie's looking very bored. She's sitting in a very dark room. Her, her posture isn't great. She's got a hand on her face. So all of these things are conveying that she is not loving the Zoom session. So things that you can work on. The height of your laptop, phone, tablet, whatever it is you're on, is really important. Um, ideally, your camera should be level with your eye line. So if, my, if I'm looking at this straight, I've adjusted my chair. Ooh, where's my little thing? <laughs> so that I'm pretty much framed centrally to the screen. That's very deliberate. So we know from you know watching TV and movies, having someone framed quite centrally and quite large, it's not an extreme close up like this, that's too much, but uh, a reasonable distance as if you were talking to the person in real life. So I've adjusted my chair slightly there. Oh, I feel a bit low. <laughs> but also what I have underneath my laptop today is um, my daughter's silly sense box of her pens and a random box, a gift box, because this is my preferred one. It's the perfect height for me to feel comfortable talking to the person on the other end, to be comfortable for them to look at, but also comfortable for me to sit at. Because you don't wanna be coming to the end of an hour Zoom session and feeling that your neck is out of whack or that you've done yourself an injury. So the height of your camera is very important um, and you'll notice today I'm trying very hard to make eye contact with the camera because that comes across much better in the way that we love eye contact in real life. We don't really want to be talking to someone who's obviously reading. So, you know, we try and refer down, but looking at the camera as much as possible, particularly something like this where, you know, I don't have the rest of you on the screen. So I just have to talk best I can to convey that confidence and to try and keep you engaged. Posture and proximity to the camera. So like you said, proximity, just, you know, how close you are. This would feel weird. This feels weird for me. <laughs> I'm comfortable. But also you don't want to be too far away. I've been in meetings with people where they are miles away from the camera for various reasons, and it really diminishes your presence. So try and get a comfortable distance. Posture making sure that you're sitting up properly, particularly uh, if it's like a client meeting, you wanna try and win the business, you need to convey confidence, but you don't have your whole body to do that. You just have what's, av what's available here. So your voice, your shoulders, how you're sitting, you know, something like this, it's you, maybe you're showing interest later in the meeting, but you don't wanna start like this because, you know, it conveys like, oh, I'm tired. I don't want to be listening to you, something like that. 
sound, the next one, also very important. Now you'll notice um, I am not using headphones with a little microphone on today. And I've actually tested this with colleagues. Um, my laptop, it's nothing fancy, but it's fairly new and the sound quality is pretty good without using them. But depending on uh, what computer or laptop or whatever you're using, you might want to consider doing that. Uh, for some people, they find it distracting. I, I find it distracting. But um, if you are more comfortable using that, or perhaps if you were recording it for a podcast or something, then you might want to be more, more selective about the microphone and things like that. So that's something to consider. But also, obviously, the background noise. Um, some things are out of our control. Like previously, I've run this session and uh, someone came to trim some hedges outside, which was very bad timing. Um, but if there's something buzzing in the background or uh, I don't know, like obviously we have all sorts of interruptions that can happen, but as much as possible, try and minimize any background noise. And then lighting here, most important of all, I've deliberately set up in a, a room in the house where I have a big window in front of me. So I'll quickly show you. I have full natural light luckily and the blue skies that I was mentioning in my waffling earlier um, so if you can set up in front of a window it is absolutely going to give you the best possible light natural light is the best you can get there's a lot of things on um, social media and various adverts on the internet that will be like you must have lighting 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 uh, you can buy all sorts of ring lights and things and if you're in an internal room or um, a situation where you you literally can't set up in front of a window then that might be worth considering depending on how much time you spend on zoom and how important it is that you look good on camera but all of these things like although you know natural light is the best and the best option any situation that puts you in a in a position of good lighting is gonna make you and your face brighter and if you think about when you've been in a zoom room with lots and lots of different people um, you are more attracted to those bright spots those bright people and so how you come across how you look on the camera and not about like trying to look attractive but just trying to present yourself in your best light is going to be useful for you because nobody wants to present themselves in their worst possible light right we want to convey that confidence convey presence on camera so that when we talk we want to share ideas we are given the weight that we deserve to the ideas that we want to share um, and at the bottom here like Jackie says how you show up on camera is a reflection of you and also a sign of how you uh, sign of respect for others so today I wanted to make sure that I was conveying that you know this is an important session for me I want you to be taking away lots of great value from it and I value your time and you being here so I've deliberately you know, even though I'm at home, I've put on a suit jacket, I've done my hair and makeup as I would if I was meeting you in town um, and tidied behind me, things like that. So currently, you know, there's a few bits there, but hopefully tidy enough that it's not a distraction um, and that it just, you know, either enhances how you look on camera or doesn't detract from. Because um, if you spent the whole time going, oh, wow, look at the mess behind me that's going to take away from what I want to talk about. I'll just check if there's any um, questions popping up there. I can't see any in the Q&A. Stop share. Okay, no, no questions. I will continue. <laughs> okay. All right, next up we have uh, the best way to achieve your objectives and outcomes. So, when we first went into lockdown everybody was like oh we must get on zoom we must get on zoom but there are lots of other options so before you plan to do a zoom meeting just have a think about is this what i actually want to do because just because you can it doesn't mean that you should um so something to consider is what we call synchronous and asynchronous communication so um you know is it the sort of meeting that has to be done with everyone present in the zoom room um, everyone online at the same time or perhaps you know if it's like a document review or um, a piece of training that you want something in training you want people to read is it something they could do beforehand and you could send in advance and say by the beginning of the meeting please make sure you've read this document and that means that you can have more quality time sitting on zoom 
and um, make the most of that time rather than people sitting around waiting for someone else, someone's bored, those sorts of things. Because, you know, Zoom is asking us to sit quite still, pay attention on the most distracting object in our house <laughs> for however long it's going on for. And it's very easy to switch off and get bored. So something else you might think about is, you know, is if it's just one on one, could you do it over the phone? And then that gives you the opportunity to do like a walk and talk meeting, perhaps. Um, and that can be, you know, a real lovely change of scenery, people, puts people in a good mood if the weather's nice, gets them a bit of exercise might get you more thinking more creatively so you know there's lots of other options like email is another one that we are you know drowning in at the moment so zoom meetings and email but um if that if there is an alternative see if, if if you can do that you know and depending what the rules are where you are like perth here now currently we can go into town and have meetings we can meet at coffee shops those sorts of things that option might not be available to everyone but Think about the alternatives, like if, if it's looking like particularly a long Zoom meeting with lots of people, is there ways that you can take bits out to ensure that it's a quality time in the Zoom room? So this note about flipped classrooms is exactly that. So um, rather than the teacher delivering information, the concept of a flipped classroom is that you consume the information at home and then you bring your questions to class to get support with that part of the programme. So while you're having the Zoom meeting, make sure you've got clear objectives. So like today, I let you know the objectives at the top of the session. Set an agenda. So have, as you would a normal meeting, some very clear bullet points. Um, and check how long you have. Respect people's time because we really don't want to be going from one Zoom meeting to the next to the next throughout the day. Build in those breaks and try and allow people a bit of time in between. Even if it's just to grab a drink, go to the loo, get a sandwich something so that they're not rolling through the day sitting still. Humans are not designed to do that. <laughs> We're not designed to stare at boxes and that's where people get Zoom fatigue. So as much as possible, you know, allow people a bit of time to mix things up, a bit of margin um, and you know, just respect their time by having a plan, having an agenda rather than, oh, we should have a meeting. Plan what you're going to say and how best to say it. So again, you know, if you want people to read a document, read it in advance, or you might want to practice what you're going to say if it's something really important, like whether trying to win a client, for example. How best to say it? Is it better on screen like this? Is it something that you want to say verbally? And I've seen quite a few places suggest, um, whereas in person, when you're giving an instruction, you might give it verbally and you might demonstrate it physically for example or demonstrate the piece of paper that you want people to look at those sorts of things with zoom because we you know do kind of zone out a little bit it's useful to have it written on screen say it verbally if you can demonstrate it on screen as well but give your audience a chance to make sure that they've got the right instructions because there's nothing worse than being like oh you're not on the right thing um or if you're using an external website, making sure that they've got the links that they need. Prior planning prevents poor performance, right? So anything that you can do in advance to help yourself have the most successful possible session is going to be useful. Now, if you are the host, you've got some responsibilities. Um, like we said, set the objective, the object, uh, agenda items, the goal outcomes, um, but also setting expectations. So how do you want people to show up if it's a I don't know, uh, Friday afternoon social and you're going to have a quiz, then perhaps it's casual Friday and you can let people know that, you know, they can rock up in their pajamas if they want to. <laughs> um, or you might want to, you know, give people an idea of how formal the situation is going to be. What device to use is very important. So when I've run online training, um, I've had people show up on their phones um, and they're not able to access external websites that I was wanting to use for interactive elements, which then creates a whole extra layer of awkwardness and people trying to swap devices and stuff. So if you can, if you're in a situation where you can let people know in advance what device you're going to need them to use, desktop or a laptop versus an iPad or a phone or whatever, um, a tablet, then that's going to make the, the session flow much more easily. And most people are pretty flexible on that and happy to swap if they need to. Um, environment and atmosphere, do you want it to be fun and light? So, you know, 
backgrounds, things like that. Um, silly things. Is it okay for people to, I don't know, wear a wig or whatever's going to make it fun for them? Um, or does it need to be professional and serious? So depending the kind of work you're in, you might want to think about, you know, obviously your dress code, what's behind you and those sorts of things. And all of these things behind you on screen creates that impression of what you're trying to convey. So, you know, you might think, oh, it, it shouldn't matter what's behind me but it, it does and people will pay attention. Um, does your attitude, dress code and background match? So it covers all of those things really, but making sure like today, hopefully I'm conveying, you know, this is kind of a fun, relaxed session, fairly chilled and giving you some good general information. But if it was more serious, perhaps if it was uh, like a legal, uh, legal situation, then I might not, Feel quite as smiley and so making sure that how you are on camera matches how you want other people to perceive you um, so plan and prepare resources and activities as required don't leave it to the last minute uh, and like I said try and let people know in advance if you're going to use some new technology or something that's a bit different giving them a chance to practice with it is good and if you want to use it interactively in the session then it's good to have like a, a warm up activity using that software or that website and before you do the final one. Stick to time. Hopefully I'll do that today because we don't have the interactive elements that we might normally have, but set a time for each agenda item and activity. If the discussion is still going, um, you can always give it time at the end. So things like any other business, it still works in a Zoom context. It's just you have to consciously think about that and enforce that if required, if it's you who's chairing the situation, chairing the session, the meeting and respect people's time. Um, you know, people may just have to duck off and drop off if it comes to time, because very often on the hour, they might have something else to go to. So we, if you said you're going to finish at 10 to 12, then make sure you finish at 10 to 12 or at least giving people the opportunity to duck out if they want to. Because, you know, if it's been a really interesting discussion and you want to carry it on, then you can leave that up to people. But saying at some point like, okay, well, this is the end of our allocated time. If you'd like to hang back a few minutes and provide some feedback or continue the conversation, please do so. Or if you need to get off because you've got another meeting, then, you know, acknowledge and say, thank you for your time. We really appreciate that you've joined us um, and we'll see you again, something like that. Then it's a nice way for people to duck out without having to say, oh, sorry, I've got to go and feeling awkward. And those, you know, even in real life, we do it where we're like, oh, I don't want to be part of this conversation anymore. How can I exit? without offending or making sure I've been polite and acknowledged everyone. So giving people that out if they need it is really nice. So we want to empathize and engage. So at this point, I'm going to empathize with you if you're watching this live and say, uh, feel free to have a stretch. It's good to have a little stretch and a smile break, something like that. So we might say, okay, everybody have a stretch arms up, arms to the side, and even just a little bit of movement when we've been sat so static can really just change the mindset a bit. So if you're at home watching this live and you think, okay, just shrug your shoulders, move around a bit, because I'm thinking, well, how are you feeling? How am I feeling? I feel like I've been quite tense, sat still, and smiling a lot to camera. <laughs> so move your face around, blah move your arms, move your body if you need to, feel free to stand up. It's kind of nice with this that you don't, I can't see you, you can be doing whatever you want. But, you know, take that moment to just check in physically. And so the same for your participants. What do they need right now? Will they need a break? Are they starting to look tired? How are they feeling? Perhaps if it's like a really um, difficult conversation that you're having or an emotionally draining one, uh, something about some changes that need to be made, whatever. Um, you might want to say, okay, everybody take 10 minutes, go away, come back, um, hope that they come back. <laughs> um, what will they want to contribute? So this session today, I did ask Business Station, I thought oh, it would be nice to make it interactive. It would be lovely to see you and be able to give you that feedback live. Um, that wasn't the case today, but you know, normally you might want to open up the floor to questions, get people involved. Because that's, you know, how we learn and how we engage more is just being an active participant in it. 
and I'm sure, you know, whatever the meeting is or whatever the session is, people will have things that they want to say, would like to add, and that will add value. So allowing little interludes where they can do that or giving directions for Q and A um, or any comments, then that's a nice way to allow people the space to do that. Because remember, if we're in a situation where at home on Zoom for a whole day, we might just be listening and not really get a chance to talk to anyone. And you know, that's where mental health problems start, is that we're just feeling isolated. So if there's a way people can, you know, add their two cents or add some value, then try and let them do that. Um, and as a participant, are you empathizing with the hosts? So, you know, if you've not hosted a meeting like this, I can tell you that it's a bit strange because I can't see you or hear you. <laughs> and the same, you know, if you've got people watching and they're on mute, then you don't get any of the response and that feedback that you would get in a live workshop, you know, whether you've um, made a bad joke or um, can see that they're following the instructions, that kind of thing. So um, that's why the thumbs up and the clapping hands, I'm like, yes, please use them. Um, I'm trying to see if I've got mine at the top here. No, they're not, they're not there. That's a shame. Um, so I can't show you them, but they're not on the thing, but they should be at the bottom of your screens in a normal um, interactive webinar situation. So, you know, support the host. If they ask you a question, try and respond. Um, and, you know, you get out what you put in essentially. So if you can be, you know, asking questions, if there's the opportunity, then the host's probably going to appreciate that and appreciate the interaction. Okay, Zoom etiquette. Etiquette sounds very posh and kind of a British thing, but um, it's just like in a normal meeting, you'd have your rules or, or kind of accepted behaviours. So if you're in an actual meeting, moving around a lot, eating and drinking, anything apart from like, I don't know, a coffee or a water, or a cup of tea, um, can come across a bit strange. <laughs> Partners, kids, fur babies. Now, obviously some of this is inevitable and, um, you know, particularly if the kids are at home or the dog's running around, you can't, um, it can't account for that. But if it's something that's really important, as much as you can for that half an hour, an hour, and this is why it's quality over quantity again, um, try and make sure that interruptions are at a minimum um, or that you're in a position in the house where you know, they're not going to be going to the fridge or um, walking behind you or getting up on the table or whatever it may be. Um, leaving to go to the bathroom or get up to go to the kitchen, that's fine. Um, but this is where, you know, perhaps having a rule like, I'll oh, just say, excuse me, so we know you're coming back. I had a webinar where one lady, she just disappeared. And uh, I was like, oh, what's happened? Um, and I thought, was it that bad? <laughs> and she said afterwards, uh, her mum had rang and it was quite an urgent thing. Um, but it, I didn't find that out until like a week later when I was doing some follow up stuff. Um, so, you know, it might not be top of your list, but just saying, oh, excuse me, I've got to go um, is much nicer than just disappearing. Um, and then if you are going to do that, if you are going to go to the bathroom, um, make sure that, particularly if you're on your phone, that you're not still attached and hooked in um, and that people can't see you. So put yourself on mute, switch off your camera so that they can't see and hear whatever you're up to. Um, because if somebody's walking around their house with the phone with them, it's extremely distracting for the other participants. So whatever is being said, no matter how important, most people will be looking at the person who's wandering around their house going, oh, look, oh, they've got a purple wall. <laughs> Um, and yet yeah, being aware whether you're on mute or not. Um, and sometimes it's nice to have people not on mute if they are in a quiet office space, because then you can, you know, hear them nodding along or saying, oh, that's great, um, and get some feedback on what's happening. All right, chat rooms. If we were doing this interactively, I would be putting you in a chat room because they absolutely are a great way to facilitate smaller groups. I'd say up to about mm, 15 is manageable for one person with chat rooms. If you've got a very big group, then having a support person with you is going to be really helpful just to manage Q and A's and um, chat rooms, setting up chat rooms and things. Um, because like I was saying, if you've been sat watching and listening all day, then you're going to really need to talk <laughs> so it's, there's an element of relief when you get put in a chat room just with one other person that you get to connect and talk to them 
So um, what you can also do, which is quite smart, is give people the freedom to move around chat rooms. So if you make everyone a co-host, then that means almost like a networking cocktail party situation. They can choose who they go into. So I've seen um, like, you know, parties done through Zoom where you might say, okay, lounge, kitchen. So you can name the chat rooms, uh, dining room, balcony, whatever. And then people can choose where they go pop in, have a chat with whoever, and then say, okay, I'm just going to go and see who's in the kitchen or something. And if everyone's, this is if you trust people, you can make everyone a co-host and then they can move around. Now, if you're on a time limit on a more um, rigid session um, that's not so sociable and relaxed, then, you know, you will probably want to maintain your co-host, um, just maintain yourself as the host. Um, and then you can facilitate and move people between the rooms. If you do that, it's good to not leave people for too long because you, as the host, you can move in and out of rooms and move yourself around. But, um, you know, there's probably rooms where there's a couple of people that maybe don't know each other that well. They might be having a really awkward conversation. So I'd say maximum of maybe seven minutes if it's something where people don't know each other that well. It's just enough time to connect, have a chat, share their ideas on whatever the topic is, and then bring it back together is nice. Um, so set the questions before you go, if you're going to put people in a chat room, set up the numbers. Now, if you've never used the chat rooms function before, you do have to switch it on. Um, so there's, there's a few things in Zoom where if you go into the settings, you have to go and switch it on. So chat rooms is one of them. The polls is one of them. Um, if you want to do some quick quizzes and stuff. Um, so it's worth, again, going in, having a playing around, look in those settings and see what you can see in there. Um, think, pair, share is quite useful. So if you've got something you want feedback on, then you can say to people, all right, have a think individually, pair up to share it with each other. Um, sorry, pair up to discuss the idea. And then that gives them validation before they share it back to the main group. Um, the concept of like an Olympics is nice. So the best ideas uh, feedback to the whole group uh, from a particular, you know, and you can chat rooms, you can do chat rooms, whatever size you want, essentially. Um, but having, I'd say maximum about four people in the chat room enables the conversation to still flow. Um, and ask them to nominate a spokesperson. So you don't do that awkward, like, oh, d who's going to go next? Um, and so, you know, you very easily move between them, get the feedback quickly, because something that would normally be quite quick in a face-to-face -face workshop, for example, it does often take a little bit longer on Zoom, either because of technical issues or um, just nominating people. There's not that same flow of communication that you get in real life. Um, so, you know, if you want feedback from everyone, let them know beforehand, nominate a spokesperson, all that sort of thing is quite useful. Um, okay, your time to shine. 59% uh, of employees feel more self-conscious on screen than they do in real life. Hands up if you can relate. <laughs> and what's weird about Zoom is that, you know, we can see ourselves. Now, you can actually switch off your own screen if you don't want to see yourself. Um, obviously, the downside of that is that um, if you've switched off your screen, you can't check how things are looking. So for example, right now, I know the sun's gone behind a cloud. It's a little bit darker in here. Um, and I wouldn't be aware of that if I wasn't able to see myself right now. But you can do that if you really don't want to. If you're very nervous about being on camera, some tips, plan what you're going to say first, even if it's just some bullet points. We try and, you know, as with any public speaking, because this is public speaking, not reading, but having a few bullet points or, or some pictures that will prompt your, your things that you want to talk about. Keep it short and simple. Everyone benefits from uh, someone's talk being shorter rather than longer. I don't think anyone said, oh my God, that talk, oh, you know, I wish it went on forever kind of thing. Smile. My face is hurting from smiling so much right now. But if you can convey some warmth through your presence on camera, then that's really going to help you. And people will feel warmer towards you as well. If you, you know, look like you're enthusiastic, you're enjoying yourself. Um, and, uh, you know, just having a good time doing whatever it is you're doing. Um, a nice thing to do is to pick one person for the meeting and talk to them. So, you know, if you've got a room full of faces looking back at you, 
and you think, oh, I don't know how people are responding to this. You could, you can even say to this person, friend of yours, perhaps, or a colleague that you feel um, you can trust and that you can read their face and expressions. Um, you could say to them, you know, please be extra responsive if it's something you're doing to a group and um, watch them, just watch their reaction. You could even move their image to the middle all right, so you can move people around on screen, move their camera, their, um, their video to the middle so that it's close to your screen, um, ah, camera. <laughs> uh, so put them close to the camera and then you can see them and their response, but it looks like you're looking at the camera. So right now I'm looking just below my camera and right now I'm looking at my camera. So there's very little difference if I go down, up, but it's a good tip to help you look like you're looking to camera. Whereas if they, they're down the bottom of the screen, if I'm looking down the bottom of my screen, I look like this. And so you don't get that same connection if I'm up, down. So being aware of your eye line or where it's at is useful. Um, facial expressions and energy. Yeah, you really have to, if you're you know, in the host's position, it does take a little bit more energy and you do feel like a lot of the energy is held up here on zoom you know there's nothing going on i'm just sat here like nothing happening in my legs whereas the, the top half is holding a bit more tension than it normally would um and that is you know purely because i'm trying to convey energy across the camera to you um but, and you know you'll get off an hour session if you've been really putting into it then you will get off an hour session and feel pretty drained so having a gap between this and the next one is going to be useful um, and then hand gestures. I'm a very handsy person, but um, I try and keep them back from the camera because some people will put, you know, use their hands close to the camera and not really be aware of it. So if you're talking like, oh, big picture. And now my hands become the focus of, um, of the session, essentially. You'll be distracted by that and other people will be distracted by your hands as well. So. I would suggest trying to keep them off camera best you can, um, but something to think about if, if you are the kind of person that uses your hands a lot. Okay, so engage and energize. We don't wanna just sit bored. Um, so we're gonna do the first thing on here, which is move. I'm just gonna stand up a sec. And if you are watching, I suggest you do the same. Stand up, move around. I'm not wearing pajama bottoms, as you can see. Um, and you can do this in the middle of a meeting. You just say, hey, everyone, let's just stand up for a minute because we're not designed, like I said, to sit down all day. So you can ask people to move. You can get them to play. So having some kind of game, not anything that's going to take a lot of time, but something that's going to, you know, just make it competitive. Who's the first person who can, I don't know, grab a blue thing or something? Connecting. So either as a whole group or in those small groups, you could set some questions that will help people connect because as we know, working from home can be quite isolating. So you could say to people, can everyone share something that's made them smile today? And it's a way to humanize everyone. It's a way to um, share something about our day, which you know lots of us like to do. Um, and it's a way to learn a little bit more about the person. So um, last time I did this session, I said something, you know, I was here, professional, doing my Zoom stuff. And I said something that made me smile was um, my three-year-old daughter um, trying to do ballet twirls. <laughs> and immediately anyone who had kids or has nieces or nephews or grandchildren of a similar kind of age were like, oh, I remember when my three-year-old did that or when my child was three or when my son, who's now 34, was three, he did this. So it's a way to connect people. It's a common ground that can help build rapport. And so no matter what the session is, having little things to build rapport is always gonna be beneficial. Um, something to see, so maybe a nice picture or a meme or something to break it up or a, a model like this on screen. Um, something to listen to so you might want to put on some music or a youtube video something to break it up or something to think about something to ponder slightly differently perhaps um in my critical thinking coaching doing something like um bringing in uh, the six thinking hats so saying okay we're going to talk about this problem or this decision let's all look at it from uh what's the best possible outcome what what would that look like get everyone engaged, everyone can type or respond, or um, what's uh, some alternatives 
if we're stuck in a A or B situation, what would be a crazy plan C, D, E, F, G, whatever it may be. So things that are going to just break up the monotony a little bit. And so this is a nice representation of some of the things you might want to do. I do have a blog, um, which if you are interested, you can email me and I'll send you the link, um, which is 39 different things to energize the Zoom room. Um, because it's just a little bit of forethought or planning or research. Um, you don't even need to prepare for a lot of them. You can just throw them in. You say, right, I think we need something to energize us a little bit or um, you know, give us a little break from what we're doing. So let's do this quick activity. And you might feel a bit self-conscious initially, but people will appreciate that you're trying. <laughs> um, so if you're going to do any brainstorms, uh, it's good to use some other products because the Zoom can be a bit static and it's hard to get feedback in there. So, for example, um, you can use an interactive whiteboard on Zoom. So I'll just show you quickly. Move my face. <laughs> so when you go to the screen share, I'll stop sharing that one. Um, mm, 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 screen share, it gives you a few options and you do have whiteboard on there. So if you want to write some things down, you can use text, you can make notes, you can um, rub things out, you can spotlight stuff so people can see where you're trying to direct them to, you can move stuff around, draw pictures, so a lot of people don't even realize it's there, but that's actually a really useful little tool. Um, other stuff, oh, where's my screen share gone? <laughs> up we go. Uh, other stuff, um, Jamboard is really nice. That's a Google product and it's free. If you've got uh, Gmail, I think. Um, definitely if you use G Suite for business. Um, it's got post-it notes that you can move around and it kind of acts like uh, PowerPoint slides. You can kind of skim across so it's nice and then people can download the final thing at the end um, to take away with them so if there's brainstorming people are putting lots of ideas and then they might want to keep those then they can download it at the end um, mural is another option this is a paid product similar kind of stuff it's got a little bit more functionality to it um, but even something like uh, google docs slides or any other online document sharing platforms are quite good if you just want to like gather lots of ideas um, and the nice thing with Google is if you use them regularly then you know people are quite used to the layout and the way things work in there but some other options um, Canva, Prezi, Trello and lots of other design based websites have collaborative functions built in so you could create a document in Canva for example you could send people the link so that they can collaborate with you and then have it up on a screen share on one person's screen so that you can see what people are doing as you are working on that thing so you know if you were trying to i don't know design a pdf in canva then you could have it on zoom working on it together and having it there in real time and being able to discuss it in real time is you know it's probably easier in some ways doing that via zoom than if you were doing it just sitting together working on one computer for example so it's quite a nice way to um, you know get people involved and work on creative things in what is otherwise not very creative medium um, okay as I said at the top though allow time to practice so if you're with a group and they've never used like the interactive whiteboard is pretty easy and that's under the control of one person but something like Jamboard, Mural, any of the other things it's worth doing like a little practice run, maybe getting people to, I don't know, write their favorite movie or something on one slide. They get to practice using it, see how it works before they do the activity that you really want to add value with. Okay, um, some low tech stuff. So if you're really stuck and you want to change the energy in the room, then here's some really easy things that you can do. So I spy is the first one. And you can do this, you can be like, oh, okay, I spy with my little eye, something blue. And you say, oh, is it this? Is it my Bustleton picture? And I might be looking at your room and saying, oh, I spy something beginning with H. Um, perhaps there's a hat in the background. Um, so I do the colours one because I have young children. <laughs> the letters aren't so good. Um, 
Or you might say, I don't know, uh, I spy, oh, there's not much in my background, I spy something on a hook um, and you can like try and guess whose room it is in. You might say touch something, so we might say touch something blue and then everyone has to look around the room, grab something of that colour. We might say touch something orange, find something orange um, and depending on the colour you know it's just a way again and it forces people to move there's a slight like, competitive element You're like, oh quick all right something red something red I've got something red um, and it literally takes like a couple of minutes but it will just wake people up a little bit so you know little games like that hangman you could do on the interactive whiteboard as we were just doing um pictionary as well so that'd be kind of a fun thing if you're having like a social connection kind of a meeting rather than a formal you know um productive meeting then have a quick game of hangman why not um head shoulders knees and toes just getting everyone to stand up run through that that's kind of fun um uh, i saw it used recently by a, a children's entertainer who'd go like everyone hands on heads everyone hands on shoulders, everyone hands on hips, everyone hands on your tail. And the kid's are like, ah, I don't know, but Simon says, things like that. It just lightens things up a little bit because we're all human at the end of the day, no matter how formal and stuffy the environment, um, we all, you know, everyone enjoys a bit of fun. So um, yeah, there's a quote, I used to use it, fun matters, we're human. Um, and if people are in a good mood, they're more likely to retain information. So it's not just me being silly, but, if people are in a good mood, they feel good, they have those feel good hormones in them and so they are more willing to new, take on new information. If you're stressed, if you think about it like this, if you're stressed and tired, um, your, you know, your um, mental capacities are going towards those things that are stressing you out and you're focusing on them rather than the new information in front of you. So putting people in a good mood, it might seem a bit silly, but it's really useful nice little team building thing finally the verbal quiz question so you could just say to people all right everyone needs to think of a general knowledge quiz um go around you know if there's a team of you all right 10 people in the room everyone bring a quiz question you can make it multiple choice if you like and get people to write their answers in the chat box at the end or they could handwrite it show it on screen at the end um so there's lots of very simple low-tech ways that you can you know foster relationships foster connection build people up um so that the whole experience is better if you think about you know i've been to conferences where in a whole day we've done one fun interactive slightly competitive activity but i remember that activity and i remember that following session much better because of that activity the person had empathized with the audience and thought what will someone need that's been at a conference all day and it is movement interaction and something playful to wake us up okay so what next um, if you need any uh, further information one-to-one -one coaching or just have a couple of questions um, then I would suggest for myself I'm more about planning engagement using it in education training meetings things like that um, there is a free template for planning so you know if you're watching this live or on the replay you can drop me an email hello at Beth Unwin and I can send you a template of you know how you might structure a session and um, ideas of how what to include how long you might want to give things and some of the summary from today actually the etiquette and ideas to consider in preparation and following a session as well um, as I mentioned next week we have online course creation for business stations so if you're watching the replay that will probably also be on the YouTube channel um, and also uh, decision making fast and slow. So if you're interested in um, how your brain works, how we make decisions and how you can make more holistic, confident decisions, or if you find yourself overthinking on decisions, then um, that's a really fun interactive session. Um, there's no hiding off camera on that one though. <laughs> there's a lovely small group of people. Um, and then uh, Jackie Maloney that I mentioned at the top there, uh, actress, and um, screen presence coach. So if you are struggling with confidence, your presence on screen or you know, speaking with clarity, conveying your personality on camera, then um, Jackie's email is there. You can get in touch with her um, and we both can deliver tailored in-house workshops. So if you're in a specific context, like, um, I don't know, mediation and you want some help on how to structure that and how you can 
keep your things private in different rooms or um, you want to pitch to clients online and just have some quick support with that, then feel free to get in touch with either of us and we can help you out. And I know Business Station has an amazing list of um, upcoming workshops on all different topics. So if you've enjoyed today, you found it useful, then either get in touch with myself, but also go back to Business Station and see what else they have coming up. Um, and if there's something that you're wanting from them, then um, Agatha, who organizes these, is great at um, tailoring things to the needs of the clients. So, any questions? If anyone's watching live still, there's a few of you in there, so feel free to drop any questions now. Um, I will just check the chat box. Everyone's feeling very shy. If you want to drop a question, then you can do. Um, oh, we've got someone there, but on mute. Um, I'll not put you. Uh, I'll not put you on camera without <laughs> without giving you some warning. Um, just give it a couple of minutes if anybody does want to chuck a question in. And if it's something, you know, that you're struggling with or you lack confidence with, the, you know, you can get help. You can ask myself or Jackie, but also um, just practicing, practicing using it. So perhaps if there's a couple of you in a, in a team together that you feel like you want to improve on, then, um, you know, you can practice video yourself. Um, think about, you know, how it looks, what your setup looks like. Um, check your sound yourself even but it's nice to have a colleague or a friend that you can just you know practice using a few things and then once you've used it a couple of times you get much more confident more quickly just gonna grab a drink of water always have water close by when you're on zoom <laughs> Okay, everyone's being very shy today. <laughs> Always put your phone on silent. <laughs> um, uh, all right, thank you very much for joining me today. If you stay to the end, uh, I really appreciate you being here and investing in yourself um, and learning and growing for your business. Um, and have a lovely day. <laughs> I'll end it there. <laughs>